right and to organize uh, in a proper way. Here, first of all, you see some, some technical details. Um, we use a low enriched uranium, so the enrichment is less than 20%. Uh, the fuel you have seen already is uh, just, um, you saw the fuel rod, but inside the fuel you have five cylinders. Two, three uranium cylinders and two graphite cylinders inside this uh, stainless steel tube. So these uh, fuel elements, they compose the core. And uh, uh, we have been standing now on top of this platform, looking down into the reactor core. The, 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 the tank is six meters deep and has two meters in diameter. Uh, in the horizontal cross section, you, you see <coughs> some additional experimental facilities, uh, mainly the so-called paint tubes, which I pointed out these are the tubes which penetrate from the reactor through the concrete in the reactor hole. So these steam tubes are mainly used for physics experiments, while the samples you saw upstairs, which are lowered into the core, are mainly used by chemists. Chemists mm -hmm. activate materials for uh, uh, neutron activation analysis. And uh, one way to, to bring the samples into the core are either on these ropes in the center of the core or in these tubes uh, which I showed you with this plastic capsule. But there is an additional way I will show you in a moment. The, the physics students are gathered around these beam tubes. Now, because you extract the beam neutrons outside of the uh, core, you have to shield here uh, neutrons away in order to be not exposed to radiation. So therefore, when we walk around, you will see heavy concrete blocks which are movable, which are arranged around the beam tubes, and the experiment is set up behind, and the signals are then extracted to the electronic equipment and so on. These are one, two, three, four beam tubes. But here you see uh, a kind of dry irrigation room, uh, which is also connected with an uh, other channel to the reactor. So here we have a little elevator, and this is this yellow block you can see, which ends in about uh, three meters or four meters high. We have a little elevator where we can where we can lower the sample in front of the beam and extract it again during operation. In this place, we usually irrigate uh, electronic equipment for the agency, mm -hmm. they want to know uh, which, uh, um, uh, which irrigation level uh, electronic components of detectors, of, of uh, video devices and so on fail uh, a neutral irrigation because the, the agency has installed surveillance equipment in the power plants and some of them don't support high gamma radiation or high neutron so here we test the lifetime of electronic equipment in the radiation field. And on the other side, you see this huge block, which is made of graphite, very green, nuclear grade graphite. And it's about two meters deep, and this shield is a huge concrete door. Then the reactor shut down, this door can be opened, and the experiment can be set up, which has a about one times one square meter surface, and then the door is closed and it's not that it's not. This is so-called thermal core because the neutrons are slowed down by graphite, and you have a large beam of slow neutrons, mainly used for the radiation of biology, equipment materials, but also for detector tests and so on. So, uh, this is the reason why this reactor is so popular, especially in like universities. In Europe, you have 10 trigger reactors. The Vienna one, the, in Roma, in Italia, in Italy, in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, in Istanbul, in Turkey, in Mainz, in Germany, in Pitesh, in Romania, and in, in Helsinki, in Finland. Uh, outside Europe, there are about uh, another 20 of trigger reactors. 
at Smith University, there is one in Brazil, in Belo Horizonte, uh, Mexico, Mexico, yes, and, uh, and then uh, uh, some, some converted triggers in, in Thailand, and uh, in, in Bangladesh is also a trigger. No, 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 it's not a trigger. Some of them are connected to the hospital to produce a lot of plants. Okay, um, yeah, let's see. Just for your information, uh, this is again our, our model. And here we have set up a, a short, short version of a power reactor fuel. This is from a boiling water reactor. In reality, it's about three times as long, mm -hmm. three meters. And you can see a large number of tiny, tiny rods. Okay, kannst du hier nur das Licht aufdrehen? Doch, äh, in der Eingangstür. Na, da unten. Da, da drückt drauf irgendwo. Da wird's. Ja, da, ja, genau. So, ja, okay. Um, a large number of very thin rods, and they are grouped together in a so-called fuel assembly. And if you look closer, you can see here cut open. Um, just, it's not uranium, but it should represent the uranium fuel, pellets, uranium dioxide, uh, to see how it looks like. And in real operation, this assembly is inside such a box made of zirkaloe, a zirconium alloy, and uh, in, in a real fuel element from outside, you don't, you only see this box, also this is closed, this is just for for, for looking inside. And about 400 to 600 of these assemblies, they set up a core of a typical boiling water reactor. So this is also to show the visitors the difference between a research reactor fuel. The lifetime is over 50 years. The lifetime of the core is about three years. Mm -hmm. After three years, the uranium is consumed uh, so that the fuel has to be extracted, spent fuel pool, cooled down, and ultimately reprocessed or final storage. Now we walk a little bit around. Uh, you can see the movable 